I, I actually have to set up the overlay guys just one secure. Wait, I don't even know what buttons I'm pressing right now. No, music enabled. There we go. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> All problems it's aside. A, it's been a slow start today, but we're we're getting there. Yeah, I actually have to... Um, the game sounds a little bit low. Let me just tweak my audio real quick, guys. Uno momento. Sorry, we're doing all sorts of sound tests except for the in-game one. You know, the one that probably matters the most. Alright, there we go. Now we should be ready. Welcome to the IEM qualifiers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rifkin, joined today by Penguin from My Insanity. And, uh, you know what? I can't say it's client tag, so spawning here in the lower right corner of the map. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> the pink Zerg player from My Insanity, the Canadian-born man known as Kane. And his opponent spawning in the top left spawn location, representing Nuit Blanche. It's going to be the blue Terran player, Funke. I feel like if we don't play the uh, Frost introduction at least once in this series, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> uh, for once, I will actually enjoy the, fr the Frost intro if we have to play it. Man, I don't know why everyone hater aids on it. I love it, but... Uh, Whatever, we'll talk about that on another day, moment, whatever, because we got a TVZ on our hands, guys, to kick the day off. First off, how psyched are you that there's A, no Protoss in this first match, and B, it's not a mirror matchup? Because <laughs> we are, of course, casting the European qualifiers. <laughs> We're Protoss, Protoss, Protoss. Well, um, I think it's probably in everyone's best interest if we just avoid uh, the Protoss games for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm there sure will many, there will be many later. Exactly. Kane actually gonna lose this drone if he's not careful. That would not be a great way to start the day off. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a little bit of blockerage going on there. Gonna be grabbing the extractor to just save it. It's not gonna get out uh, unless Funke were to make a pretty big mistake. He's just gonna try to annoy a little bit more with this. Probably make another extractor if he needs, if he really wants to. Oh god, one health. Scatting later on. One yeah. HP hype. <laughs> But um, I, I just want to make a, I just want to explain how the qualifiers for IEM are going to work just for anybody who's not familiar with it. Uh, but it's very very simple. There's it's basically kind of like any other qualifier. You qualify, you, uh, like you just play through a tournament and then you qualify. Except that there's two stages. So we're in stage one right now. The uh, there will be four players who move on from stage one qualifiers to the stage two qualifiers, where they will join uh, eight or twelve already invited players. I think it's eight. And uh, from there. Uh, once you, once the winners of that uh, second qualifier are sort of uh, figured out, that's who and will know who's actually going to advance to the main event in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Cool, awesome. Hopefully, get some uh, good. Hopefully, get some good players out today. There's a lot of great players in the bracket, of course. You guys can go check that out on the ESL website if you need to, but. Uh, worth noting, Funke did go for the command center first, but he didn't follow it up with any quick gas or anything like that. With three barracks coming down, we're going to get to see some pretty typical play coming out of this Darren player. Nothing uh, nothing quite so mechy today. Yeah, we're not going to be seeing any any craziness thus far, at least. Going up to the three racks pretty quickly is going to allow him to get a nice little number of marines down. Uh, he's not going to be having to deal with any sort of early pressure, all that difficult. It's not going to be all that difficult to deal with that. He's... Not going to be going up against that by the looks of it, though. Kane just droning on up. He's adding on a third queen to get his creep spread rolling as well. Uh, Link speed's on the way, but it looks primarily defensive as there's nobody in gas. So he's not going to be going roaches or banelings or anything like that in the near future. Yeah, uh, being a teammate of Kane, you're just curious, Penguin. How many queens does he normally go for in TVZ? Do you know? Uh, it varies. It varies. He he kind of goes through phases. Because depends say on the day, his mood, the position of the moon in relation to <laughs> Jupiter. Well, no, I, was, I was asking legitimately because, of course, in this, in a couple of go for Starcrafts and whatever I've cast him in for the uh, Red Bull qualifiers. I've noticed he never, he's not that player who like always goes for five. Like sometimes you'll see him go heavy on the Queen's TVZ and sometimes he'll go light and just get the one for the creep spread, which kind of looks like what he's doing right now. So I think, I think like a lot of it also depends on the, on the opponent you're playing against. Like if you're playing against somebody who you know uh, is going to be very, very aggressive and who you know you'll probably have trouble with, it's not all that, uh, all that strange to add on. A couple more, uh, a couple more queens than you would otherwise get. So, for instance, if I'm playing a player that's better than me, and uh, they're an aggressive player, I'm gonna go six queen, even though I never go six queen on ladder because they're better than I am. I'm not gonna have as good micro. I need the extra queens to help deal with it. Um, Kane probably gonna be pretty comfortable against Funke. Funke currently a uh, high masters player. He's not. 
I mean, he, he has been GM in the past, but he's not uh, exactly the... He's not, like, a Stefano-level player or something like that. Well, Penguin, so, this is a lot of lings that just popped out, but unfortunately yeah. for Kane, that's also a lot of Marines. And while he has a bailing oh, but they're leading. Away, the Marines are getting out of position. A run by here could actually do quite a bit of damage. I don't know. It's only 12 lings. This is a lot of Marines. As long as they clump up and stick together. I guess a run by, yeah. No full wall off. This could really hurt Funke. But uh, Kane, uh, I guess... I believe it's been seen. Uh, I think it was seen by that Overlord that's now flying into the main because he's pulling all of his lings back. And Morphing Banes. He's definitely seen this coming, Kane. And uh, pumping a few more lings. This is a really annoying little poke out from Funke. He's got the the three Raxes were earlier than you would usually see them. And as a result, he has this nice little amount of combat shield marines. I don't think this He's is going to be split, enough, though. though. Coming He's got a split, though, Penguin. Oh, those connections are so good. And Funke just loses everything on this half of the map. And Funke is giving everyone a lesson on why... 99% of games, the Terran will not go three racks, and instead they'll go straight into the factory, straight into the medevacs. By now, or, he could have been pressuring by it with like six to eight Hellions and had a Banshee out or medevacs. Or alternatively, if you do go for the three racks Marines, that you end up playing a little more defensive until you've got medevacs out or something. Because, man, if you if you could have lifted off, that would have been no problem for him. But unfortunately, that was a big. You know what? I I, I take it all back. You know what this was, Penguin? He's got the Christmas spirit. It's December. He wanted to donate to charity and thus so <laughs> sent the Marines across the map. It's the only logical conclusion. Yes, uh, I think your, your deductive reasoning is uh, about on par with uh, Light Yagami's, so I'm going to trust you. Well, all, all joking aside and anime references, guys, one of the big things here, though, is if Kane hadn't seen that coming, as we saw, Kane's lings were across the map. He had no banelings at home. That did have the potential to knock down that hatchery, but, of yeah. course, Kane saw that coming, so with great scouting, good overlords, a good watchtower control, he shouldn't really be in any danger from pushes like that. And uh, being a best of three, Funky's going to have to recognize that going to game number two, I think. Whether he wins or loses this first one, it's a very key point that you have to recognize in your opponent, that they are, in fact, good at scouting. This is like, just go on Kane's vision. He has vision of everything except for the far right of the map, which isn't going to be all that big a deal because he has the the pass covered, so if anything were to move over there, he would still see it. So yeah. Kane is in a very nice spot. He's about to finish 1-1, making 36 Zerglings. He could go for a 1-1 Ling Bane, uh, just sort of, not all in, but a 1-1 Ling Bane timing here, followed up by the Mutas, just because he's killed off so many Marines already. Uh, additionally, he may just feel that he's so far ahead that he just wants to have units to hold on to that lead. Yeah, I mean, he's not banking a ton of gas. I was expecting to have, like, a massive, like, you know, Mutilus Swarm that we so often see in this matchup, but uh, with Burrow on the way, it looks like he's going to be doing some cool stuff. And I say cool stuff like in air quotes. Well, I mean, he, I mean, these Canadian Zergs like their Burrow Banes, Ripken. That, you know what? That much is for certain. Uh, moving on here to a bit of an awkward third base. Still going to get scouted. Unfortunately for Funke, this one is not exactly the, the easiest defense location, but he does have this nice ramp at the moment. There's no creeps quite up here, so... Kane doesn't quite have complete dominance in this part of the map, but I love the spread of these Widow Mines. Yeah. And basically, uh, the reason Funke is taking this base is that he wants to be the one that's aggress that's being the aggressor. When the Terran takes this third base, it means that they want to be pushing the Zergs forth pretty much non-stop. So, he's banking on not losing a big, in uh, big engagement here, and if Kane can get just one really confident win in an engagement, that's going to put him in such an amazing position, as Funke's entire game plan right now is to just power push this fourth until he just knocks it on down. And There's not that many bailings out right now, so this it's could really actually not. do quite a bit of damage. There's a lot of money spread there on patrol move too, I love that! I love when players use the patrol spread, but... Uh, unfortunately, as you said, there's not a lot of Banelings trying to come in from behind with a couple links. So the Banelings all coming from the front, though. The clumped up are these Marines, but lifts up and gets on out of there. Mutilus may be on point, but there's a lot of Marines to cover for this. So Funke is not in a bad spot, and that was actually looking a little bit scary for Kane. Even if the resources lost now, unfortunately for Funke, though, he's got to recognize Kane is really good at baiting out those Widow Mine hits. Yeah, the problem now for for Funke though is that he's very very low on Widow Mines. He's got two Widow Mines and he's only producing two at a time. He has not made the standard Oh, the bailing hits. Oh, the bailing hits are good once again, but good spread. a lot of Marines. I'm loving this spread out of Funke. He's handling this well, but this is so many bailings. He may not be able to cover it with that spread. Mule is coming in here as well and a run by towards the natural slips in. Kane actually on top of the mineral line on top of this bunker 
And on top of the supply depots will get cleaned up by the reinforcements, but not before claiming the lives of several SCVs. Yeah, eight SCVs killed there. Very, very nice moves here by Kane. You will pick off this Widowmine as well. The Widowmine count still sitting only at three. Funke really, really needs to increase that. And like I said, Funke's entire game plan is on power pushing this fourth, and he doesn't have the units to power push it anymore. He cannot leave his base. And now those bro Banelings down there as well. Kane is setting himself up in a fantastic position. He's even got an upgrade lead at least for about a oh, about no. half a minute or so when 2-2 two -two finishes. I thought he was going to go walk right on top of those Banelings for a second, but... Yeah, it's kind of interesting too. You look at the resources last right now, guys. Typically, the Zerg player will be a little bit behind because, of course, you have to trade those Banelings away. But uh, still no full wall off. Funke, what are you doing, man? Just asking for trouble here. <laughs> yeah, the wall off that is there is open. Uh, these Marines will confirm the existence of all of these Zerglings. There's some Banelings being morphed on in as well. But it looks like Funke is going to be able to position himself back there in time to deal with this. But in comes a swarm of Lings and Banes and Mutas into the third Forcing a lift, the Banelings going after the SCB line, and the Marines coming on up now uh, as well. They will take a couple of hits. Pretty good, though. He didn't lose too many of that. Yeah, the third CC is going to go down, but it's worth noting that he didn't lose much of anything to those Banelings. Meanwhile, Kane taking advantage of the Terran player being out of position. Spidey, but is in fact down, and these Widowmines are not burrowed. Oh, God. Oh, God. Kane massacring the Nashville right now. Yeah, really, really nice play from Kane here. Funke is a bit on the ropes right now, and... Oh, uh, not even full off of the main. He's forced all in. He's forced all into this push. If this push can do some critical damage, he can find a way back into this game, but it's going to be incredibly difficult against a 2 2 force. Kane the is just pulling back from too. the third because he knows he doesn't need that third right now. You mean the fourth? Uh, the fourth, rather. Yeah, yeah, he's also taking that fifth on the other half of the map, so he just transfers right over to it. It's not like he even lost the base. Uh, if, if Fungi can knock down the actual third, though, that would be great, but with the Mutalisks here, I don't think there's enough Marines. And oh, the Banes. Oh. 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 Uh, oh, uh, oh. Actually, not the best, not the most damage, but good hits nonetheless. Softens up the Marines, allows the Mutalists to come and clean everything up, and Funke is going to lose every single unit. Oh, no. Now with an army deficit of like 40 to 108, there's just no way to compete with these Mutalist numbers. Oh. And this is going to be the nail in the coffin here for Funke. Kane's going to be able to push on into the main. Some really good Widowmines hits go down, but since good the nerf, game. you can't just straight up win with Widowmines, and that's going to be GG Funke. Gonna GG out. Kane gonna take game one. This is the best of three, though, so not, not over, over yet. yet. Yeah. Now, we're talking about the Woodwind Nerfs just briefly between the games here, and uh, I want to point out there was two Banelings standing right next to each other. Woodwind went off on one, and the other one went away with only half health. Like, what the heck is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, definitely not the easiest thing to uh, rely on them at the moment, but. It's one of the reasons that a lot more Terrans have been adding Thors into their bio recently, because the Thors have much better splash damage against the Mutas than the Widowmines do at this point. I'm loving seeing people like uh, Hero Marine and Apocalypse start using tanks and then transitioning into the Thors as well. Yeah, like, I love that as well. The tanks used to be it's so... really smart, though, because like at the, in the early game, you use the like the old Widowmines in the early game were to deal with Banelings, and in the later game, the later the game went, they were to deal with Mutas. So the tanks and the Thors have the exact same... Uh, have the exact same purpose yeah. in their respective parts of the game. Almost well, map two. Oh, it is gonna be frost. Fantastic. Oh wow. <laughs> we can get it's funky. Get, it's time to get funky. I hate that you don't have a camera. You can't dance with me. But your penguin's already bobbing his head, so he knows what's up. He knows what's up. And Hobbs is dancing too. 